Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, New Year Dash 2018 review. I know this review is going to be very dated because this show happened in January and it's March and I'm just now reviewing it. I originally did watch the show, like in February, like not long after it happened. I did a live reactions for it, actually, which you should check out. I'll probably post it in the description box or in the comments, actually. Um, but then what happened was... Uh, we were supposed to cover it on the Aftershock Corner, which I'm suspended from. This is actually now day five of the suspension. Um, and then um, we just never got around to it because we've had snowstorms. We've had this. We've had that going on. So uh, schoolwork and stuff. So I never got around to it. And I just figured we're never going to really get around to it anyways. So I'll just do the review myself. Um, I do want to talk about New Japan stuff on the Aftershock Corner. But unfortunately, it is going to have to wait until after, um, until the fall, because that probably w will be when I can kind of catch up with it. So let's hope that happens. I'm here to give you guys though new uh, the review for New Year Dash 2018. This aired the day after Wrestle Kingdom 12, um, and then we have the same t commentary team: John Callis and Kevin. I don't think it's Kevin Sullivan, but it's Kevin something. Um, I'm actually looking. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Um, because if I look up Wrestle Kingdom 12, I'll probably be able to find out who the commentary team was. Maybe, I don't know. It doesn't say commentary team um so it's kind of tough to say i'm just gonna say cat but i know it, it, it was kevin so yeah um but it was basically the same english commentary team from um wrestle kingdom 12 and uh yeah basically uh all these matches consisted of uh multi-man tag matches whether it was eight man ten man or 10-man tag matches. I believe there was only one one-on-one -on -one match on this show. Um, and I was actually okay with that. You know, obviously the wrestlers have probably heard from Wrestle Kingdom 12. So this is kind of a way they can still work without really having to do a whole lot. And obviously this keeps guys protected. Uh, because it keeps the champion... Um, whoever, um, whatever, whoever the champions are protected from losing. This is a way you could kind of launch off feud. And 8-man and multi-man tag tag matches are typically really good matches. I don't really think I've... I've been, I think there's been a few bad ones before, obviously, uh, but typically multi-man tag matches are just technically supposed to be good, and it protects everybody in the match. So I like um, that they did this idea. So let's get to the first match. Um, we had an eight-man tag team match. It was uh, the tag team of Tenkoji, Tenkoji, which consisted of... Um, Hiroshi Tenzin and Satoshi Kojima um, and Tenkoshi teamed up with um, Manabu uh, Na 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 Kenji and Yoshi y Yoshi Nagatu. I think I said those names completely wrong, but whatever. But they were, but yeah, it was Tenkoshi Manabu um, Nakanchi. And Yoshi Nakatu versus when um, Narita, Shota, Umunu, um, Tenshushi, ya Yagi, and Tomoku Oka. I think I said all those names wrong, but basically they kind of did this as like the fathers of New Japan versus the Young Lions of New Japan. They had all had been in the uh, New Japan Royal Rumble match that was on the pre-show Wrestle Kingdom 12 that I didn't see. Uh, this was actually, I thought, a uh, good tag match here. Don't really remember a lot of the match, but this was a good tag match. I'll give it three stars. Uh, basically, uh, the old Lions win when one of the guys hits a discus clothesline on um, a member of the Young Lions team for the win. But overall, I thought this was a uh, good tag match. Three stars. I didn't really mind the fact that the old guns Lions won because it shows that they can still hang with the young Lions. And uh, this really wouldn't affect 
Um, either guy's push, so I was okay with this. It was a good match. Three stars, gets an, uh, it gets an up. Then we had a 10-man tag team match. It was Hawaii, Quado, Juice and Thunder Liger, Tiger Mask, Toa, Henry, and Toga Mac Macby versus Suzuki Guns, which consisted of uh, El Desperado, um, Tiger Ushi, Taka Michinoku, um, Tagahashi Uzuki, and y Yoshinobu Ken Kenamura. Uh, Kenamore, I believe, is the guy that's, like, crazy. He's, like, a barbarian. I um, mean, he just absolutely goes nuts. And, um, Suzuki gun attack, um, the face team, Juice and Ligo and Tiger Mask before the match starts. And they beat the crap out of him. One of the guys throws Juice and Thunder Ligo into the steel post. Um, and the heels dominate, um, I believe it was, uh, Manabu, no, sorry, I looked at the one team. Uh, Toa for a long ass time, and then the face team gets the hot tag, and eventually, um, Sunzuki Gun get the get the win. Um, I forget how the finish went, but Suzuki Gun went over with their finish. Then afterwards, uh, they take out a metal glove and hit Quado um, in the face with it. I like this because it sets up a future feud. And this made Suzuki Gun look really strong, and I liked it. It was great. Um, so this match also gets three stars, and this gets an up. And then uh, we had just a regular single match. Um, it's a um, Kazuka Kitamura uh, seven match trial first match. Jay White versus um, Kasua Kitamura. I thought this was a decent match here. This was obviously a way for Jay White to kind of bounce back after failing to win the IWGP um, Intercontinental Championship the night before. Um, and at first he tried doing a ton of things uh, by trying to do a test of strength with uh, um, Kitamura. But Kitamura keeps out power him because he's a real powerhouse. And eventually he teases like he's going to go for a test of strength. But then he, um, he uh, kicks his knee out. And throws him into the guardrail on the outside. Throws him all the way to the outside. And he tries to get him counted out. And in New Japan, it's a, instead of a 10 count, it's a 20 count uh, for a count out. And uh, Quata, um, sorry, Kitamura just makes it in in time. And Jay White starts uh, going after the knee of Kitamura. Then eventually he starts making his comeback. And Kitamura um, um, nearly wins the match. But then he gets placed into a... Uh, um, he, um, into a figure four, and then he hits, um, start hitting, and then, uh, Jay White starts hitting a ton of elbow drops repeatedly on Kitamura, and then he eventually hits the, uh, it's not called the switchblade, what's it called? Um, oh, I don't remember what it's called, um, uh, but I forget, but, I, but, it, but it's something to that effect. Um, I'm just going to call it the switchblade, but I don't, I know that's not the name, um, of the move. But it's basically the sister Abigail, and he beats Kitamura for the win. Um, and obviously, I thought this made sense for Jay White to go over since it kind of gave him a path. And considering what they did with him later on the night, which I'll get into, um, it made sense for him to go over. I like Jay White. I think he's a pretty decent talent. Um, so this gets two and three quarter stars. It was pretty decent, and this also gets an up. I thought this was actually a pretty decent match here. You had a, you had a clearly defined heel, clearly defined face. Um, and Jay White, I thought, looked really strong. Um, winning, and then uh, and then when that had a six man tag team match, it was Bullet Club members Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks uh, versus Wapunga 3K, uh, which and Cheeseburger with Rocky Romero inside. And yes, there's a wrestler named Cheeseburger. I loved Bullet Club's theme song when they came out. They uh, basically all the elites of uh, the Bullet Club. Obviously, Kenny Omega was selling the injuries that he had the previous night. Uh, after his match with uh, Chris Jericho, and same thing from uh, with um, now I may get this wrong because it's only, I've only seen these guys wrestle a few times. Matt from the Young Bucks, I may have gotten that wrong though. And yeah, there was a wrestler named Cheeseburger. That's pretty damn cool because uh, that's like one of my favorite foods, and the fact that there's a wrestler named Cheeseburger and he was over as hell. And elements of this match I loved was uh, Yo. I think I have this one too. 
and Matt went to go, both went into the ring, and they were selling the injured back from uh, the match that uh, Rapunga 3K and the uh, the Young Bucks had had the previous night. So they kept trying to do lockups, and uh, Matt tried to bounce off the ropes, um, but uh, they were selling their back injuries, which I thought was a nice touch. Uh, there was a spot where Nick uh, tried to tag out because he didn't want to fight uh, Show, but uh, Omega and uh, Matt weren't having it because they were hurt, so I thought that was great. And then eventually there was a spot where uh, Bullet Club hit um, a triple super kick right on to... Um, um, cheeseburger, and they get the heat on him for a long-ass time, and then Mapunga 3K gets the hot tag and start going off on Bullet Club, um, and, um, basically, uh, yeah, basically, um, Mapunga 3K hit a sick, uh, um, double-T move on him, uh, Sho hit a sick neck breaker early in the match, uh, Young Bucks hit a, uh, neck breaker, back breaker, combo, um, onto, uh, Cheeseburger, and, um, Cheeseburger gets the hot tag, and he goes to hit a dive right onto everybody, uh, but then eventually, um, Bullet Club hit a basically elevated indie taker, um, onto Cheeseburger for the win, and Bullet Club goes over, obviously this makes sense because Bullet Club's more of a formidable team than Cheeseburger and Rapunga 3K, Considering the fact that Kenny Omega came off his win with Chris Jericho, you really couldn't have him lose this match here. So, I thought this was actually um, good stuff. Up, this match was really good. Um, I think this might have been my favorite match on the show. By probably, I don't actually know. It wasn't quite my favorite match on the show. This is three and a half stars. Um, I'll say what my personal favorite match on the show was. Um, and obviously, um, Cheeseburger reading the pin, I guess, was okay because he didn't really have a significant match or anything, so obviously I was okay with that. Then we had the next match. It was a 10-man tag team match. It was Bullet Club members again. Uh, Chase Owens, Cody, Leo Tonga, Marty Squall, and Yoo Tagahashi, Ta Tagahashi uh, with Brandy Rhodes inside. So I had the, th the strangest thing is, is Brandy can use the Rhodes name, but Cody can't. I kind of find that funny. Uh, but they wrestled David Finley, Juice Robinson, Kota Ibushi, Kushida, and uh, Wazuke Taguchi. Um, I, um, I thought this uh, was a really good match here as well. Obviously, this match is kind of, I watched this match before Cody said the stuff that he said about how WWE doesn't sabotage anybody's careers. All Cody is just so funny, so I can't really watch Cody Rhodes the same anymore because... He's lost a lot of credibility after saying that because basically he left WWE because he didn't want to be Stardust anymore and he felt like that they were holding him back. And then a year later, or maybe a couple years later, he's literally saying that WWE doesn't sabotage people. Cody, you're just funny. Brandy Rhodes did commentary. I mean, literally, they won't even let you use the Rhodes name. And they'll let your wife use your wife, your, your family name. And you... And yet the WWE doesn't sabotage anybody. I can't. I'm not even going to get into that right now because obviously I'm just going to go off on a whole tangent. But Brandy Rhodes did commentary for this match. Um, I know Rhodes isn't really his last name, but I'm just saying if Brandy can use it, why the hell can't Cody use it? Don't even give me this crap about woman and male thin. Um, and WWE is all about you know the women's evolution. That's bull crap. That wasn't even. That wasn't even because Cody should be able to use his name. But anyhow, that's besides the point. Um, yeah, this match I thought was a um, really good match. Um, some of the highlights of the match was um, when Marty Scroll went to get into the ring because he was pissed at um, um, Tagahashi. Um, he tripped in the wind. I thought that was funny. I, obviously, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, you know, um, other highlights of the match was, uh, Juice Robinson. Um, everybody in the match hitting a hip attack and then Kota Ibushi going to do it because of David Finley, Juice Robinson, um, and Taguchi are all like a team. So I thought that kind of was funny. Um, the heels get the heat on. Taguchi for a while, and they, uh, 
actually end up tugging in his ass, which was unique. Um, and eventually the hot tag goes to David Finley, and he gets the hot tag on Cody, and Cody goes off on him. Um, and eventually uh, the Bullet Club hit the, uh, you know, Bullet Train, um, Bullet Train, and um, Leo Tunga is like really big. So he can't, Marty Scroll's trying to Irish whip him, but he can't. So he has to like, go, um, Marty Scroll just goes on his back and runs across the wind. I thought that was hilarious. Um, and then Cody Obushi and Cody go at it. And then the finish finally comes when Cody hits, uh, gets uh, David Finley, I think, into an Indian death lock for the win. Then afterwards, he immediately goes after Cody Obushi and he beats the crap out of him. And Bullet Club just starts laying out each member of the face team. And Cody hits a crossroads onto David Finley, I think. And he's going to end Kota Ibushi's career with a chair. But eventually, Kenny Omega runs out. And obviously, he's the leader of the Bullet Club. And basically, tell, um, stops him. Now, obviously, um, a couple of storyline tie-ins that goes with this is from, um, when I did my research. Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi used to be tag team partners. I don't remember the team name at the moment, but that kind of ties in. And obviously, since Kenny Omega is the leader of the Bullet Club, this is obviously, and the commentators put this up over huge, kind of slowly started dissension between Cody and Kenny Omega in the Bullet Club. So obviously, that's going to be a pretty big deal once they kind of really start to go with that. Um, and I hope... Now, obviously, this is going to be a very concern, and obviously, because Kenny Omega and Cody um, are both mem there's like a ton of people in the Bullet Club, so this could lead to, into some WCW, where it's NWO Wolfpack versus NWO Hollywood stuff, but I think because it's New Japan, and I don't really think, and they, have, they know how to handle themselves, I don't really expect them to book this into crap, so we'll have to wait and see. Then afterwards, Kenny Omega... Um, Basically says that the Bullet Club really has been struggling for a while and they need a new member to kind of keep everything, all the pieces together. So he calls out Jay White and Jay White comes out and he puts the, uh, um, and Kenny Omega offers him a spot in the Bullet Club. He gives him a t-shirt and Jay White puts the t-shirt on him. This was very DDP, uh, uh, do uh, NWO type of thing where he put the t-shirt on and then Jay White hits the Blade Runner. That's the name of his finisher. Um, onto Kenny Omega and basically says he just wants his damn championship. Um, and then he leaves and now it, um, basically they've teased the match. It's going to be Kenny Omega at some point probably defending his IWGP United States Championship against Jay White. Um, Jay, J Switchblade Jay White. I thought this would so this, the match gets an up um, after what it set up, and the segment gets an up as well. I thought this was great. Kenny Omega is great on the mic too. This is the first time I've really heard him talk uh, since I really haven't been watching a lot of New Japan. And I thought this ruled. I thought this was great. Um, and obviously, they set up a lot of stuff in this one match and segment. So I thought this might have been my favorite match on the show because of that. Um, then. We had the only down on this show. We had we had a never open weight six man tag team championship match. Never open weight six man tag team champions chaos, which consisted of Beretta, Tomoro Ishii, and Toro Yano versus Bullet Club members Bad Luck Fala, Tama Tonga, and Tangaloa. Uh, Tangaloa used to be uh, Camacho from WWE, and obviously we know Beretta. Um, he just recently uh, joined the heavyweight division, which is good, good for him. And, yeah, uh, basically this was a typical six-man tag. It was pretty good. Um, I really don't want to have a lot to say about it. Um, they get the heat on a while on Yomora, and then eventually Beretta, um, then eventually Ishii gets the hot tag. Um, a spot I liked from this match was Yomora was afraid to face Bad Luck Fale, since he's really big, so I thought they kind of played into that as really nice. They really made Bad Luck Fale look like a uh, strong uh, powerhouse, and then eventually uh, Bullet Club win when um, um, when um, 
Tangaloa hits a, I don't know the name of the move, but a cutter for the win. Um, and they become the new never um, open weight six man tag team champions, which made no sense considering the fact that uh, you had Chaos win the championships the night before just to put them right back on Bullet Club the next night. That made absolutely no sense. Uh, so I thought that's a down. Um, Balak Fale really isn't that good of a wrestler. Um, I've had a chance to really see this match twice, and you can definitely see that he needs a lot of work. Um, but luckily for him, since he's in a six-man like faction, um, he can obviously hide his. They can obviously hide his weaknesses, and he can kind of come in and do all the big stuff. But yeah, it's um, he. He definitely shouldn't be doing as much wrestling as he is. He should just be out there to really get the heat on the guy um, and just do the power moves and really not do a lot of selling. So. That's just my one right with this match. But yeah, this was really the only downer of the show. The next match I also thought was uh, um, a really good match. It was a eight-man tag team match. Suzuki Gun, which consisted of Davey Boy Smith Jr., Lance Archer, the Killer Elite, Elite Squad. Um, yeah, Killer Elite Squad. Manoa Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. versus War Machine, which consisted of Hanson and Raymond Rowe. Um... Hoshiri Takahashi, ton, no, it's Hoshiri Tanahashi, uh, the IWGP Intercontinental Champion, and Michael Elgin. Now, I may be mistaken, but isn't there some controversial stuff going on with Michael Elgin? So it's kind of strange that New Japan would book him for this show, and Wrestle Kingdom 12 for that fact. But I find that kind of strange. Overall, this match was really good. Basically, the thin, the key thing that came out of this match was that Minoru Suzuki was pissed after he had to shave his head after the Never Open Weight uh, Championship match the previous night, so he just basically wrecked everybody in this match. And the main person you targeted was um, Hoshi, Hoshi, Hoshi Tanahashi. Um, he actually ended up taking on his knee with a chair, and basically the heels got the heat on one of the War Machine members for a while, and then Michael Elgin got the hot tag on Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. tried to put in a ton of submissions on Elgin, but Elgin kept fighting out of him. And eventually, um, um, Tanahashi tries to take out, um, after his knee's been hit with the chair, tries to take out everybody, but uh, Manoa Suzuki puts him in a submission move outside the win for a long-ass time, and eventually, um, Killer Elite Squad hit the Killer Elite Bomb. I don't think that's the name of the move, but that's what I'm going with. On uh, one of the War Machine members, I'm just going to say it was Hanson for the win. Um, which is kind of strange because obviously we know War Machine's been signed by WWE now. So this was basically the last match. So I actually was all in favor of them taking the fall because this isn't going to hurt them since they're leaving anyways. Um, and yeah, this was good. Afterwards, Manuo Suzuki absolutely destroys the leg of uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. So obviously, and then afterwards he gets on the mic, basically challenging him for his uh, IWGP and a Continental Championship, and this was great. Up, um, this match gets three and a quarter. I thought Manoa Suzuki looked like an absolute uh, murderer here, just whipped absolute so much ass. It was great, and I liked it. Up, then we had the main event. Um, it was a ten man tag team match. It was Chaos's Ghetto, um, Hiroki Goto, um, Kazusuke. Like I said, that Ron Okada, who was the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, or Heavyweight Champion, I forget what the exact name of the title is, Will Ospreay, who was the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, and Yoroshi Hashi versus um, Los Ingo Barnabas D. Japon, or L-I-J for short, which consisted of Bushi, Evil, um, Hamoro Tagahashi, um, Sanada, and Tatsuya Naito. This match ruled... Um, yeah, I can't believe, uh, Osprey and, um, um, Hamoro Tana, um, Tagahashi start off the match, and they actually, um, kick, and they hit some nice high-flying moves on each other, uh, they throw, um, Okada into the barricade neck first, they get the heat of four while on, uh, Ghetto, and we got to see Okada and Naito mix it up again, um, and... Basically, then the hot tag goes to uh, um, Godo, who was the I D um, IWGP Nevo um, Open Weight Heavyweight Champion, whatever it's called. That name of that title is called. And eventually, the finish comes when um, 
after everything happens. Um, you know, there was a suicide dive that Bushi hit. Um, Naito wins by getting the victory on uh, Goto for the win. I was fine with that. Obviously, Naito, I think, needed to win. And this, and they still kind of tease Okada versus Naito, too. So I thought that was great. Then afterwards, he cuts a promo, thanking the fans for their appreciation and stuff. And then, just as you think the show's going to go off the air, um, who comes out and attacks Naito? None other than Chris Jericho. Alpha Chris Jericho. So obviously, I've been very vocal recently. I've absolutely loved the New Japan version of Chris Jericho. I think it's one of his best ones he's done in a long time. Well, obviously, he just had that WWE run with um, the list of Jericho and stuff. But this has been a great one for Chris Jericho. Um, I love that he jumped in New Japan. Um, and I hope he stays there for a little bit, get some nice matches out of him. But he attacks to see a Naito. Now, obviously, the explanation they gave for this was that Naito felt insulted that his match was the co-main event. Um, so he felt insulted by Chris Jericho. So Jericho attacks him, um, and he beat. And basically, everybody in the New Japan has to break him up. They barely, they barely do it. Um, and Jericho just this was a a Jericho I've never seen before. I, I talked about that in the match he had with Omega, but this is still. He talks about how he's going to, um, you know, kick Naito's fucking ass. And it was great. He throws a table at him. And then Naito acts like he's going to throw a chair at him. And he turns his back on Jericho. And this is great. Um, now, obviously, I think what this is leading to, obviously, is Naito versus Jericho in the future. Now, because of Jericho's Fozzie tour dates, we don't really know when we're going to get that match. Now, I'm assuming because... New Japan has a lot, some big shows that it's going to be probably at Dominion if they can work it in that schedule. Um, I don't know if Jericho will be in WWE at that point because I'm hearing rumors he's just going to go to WWE after WrestleMania this year. So, but I would love to see uh, this match. Now, obviously, I think Naito is going to be the face of this match. He's gotten to get a following anyways with the New Japan audience. So I think Naito is probably going to be the face. Jericho is going to be the heel. And I'm ecstatic to see this match. Obviously, Naito... I've been watching every few of his matches lately, and he's been awesome. Jericho's awesome in New Japan. Um, probably my favorite act in wrestling at the moment. So yeah, this was an up. Um, this set up a lot of things. Obviously, a future Okada versus Naito match. I think Naito, Naito at, it's either Naito or Omega should be the ones to dethrone Okada for that um, IWGP Heavyweight Championship. I don't. I think they should do a Naito Omega match in the future. And then whoever like wins that should dethrone um, Okada. Um, so I was fine with this. This show was really good. Definitely a 7.5 out of 10. I thought they uh, did some big stuff on this show. They had G the Jay White segment. They had some good tag matches on this show. And they ha and now we know Jericho's future with New Japan. Because a lot of people had just assumed it was going to be a one night thin. And it wasn't. So I was ecstatic about that. So overall I enjoyed this show. Thumbs up. Um... Definitely check it out, and let's see where New Japan goes from here. So that's basically it, guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm not going to do any plugs because I'm going to come back and later on in the night and make a video. And that's basically it, guys. Talk to you later.